Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. In this video, I'm going to answer the one question that is asked of me. Dr. Jawad, if you had diabetes, type 1 or type 2, what would you eat? And the very easiest answer is anything that is not going to raise my insulin levels, period. Now, insulin. Insulin is a hormone produced by our pancreas. Okay, so when we take in sugar, it increases, it releases the insulin. Now the function of insulin is two. One, to lower the sugar in the bloodstream, and two, fat storage. So the problem is, is that again, when we take in sugar, we release insulin. Okay, it lowers the, it lowers the amount of sugar in the blood. Then it goes into fat storage. The problem is, once it's in fat storage, it's harder than heck to reverse the process. You actually have to do, you have to exercise. So that's the main goal. Now in a diet, the standard American diet, or let's just say a regular diet, we have proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Now the thing is, in the a body, we need two things. We need essential fatty acids and essential amino acids, proteins. We don't require carbohydrates in the form of starches and bread products. We need carbohydrates in the sources of vegetables because the vegetables have all the nutrients. Okay? So the main goal is when we eat our food, what happens is that we, when we eat carbohydrates, you can see here, there's a huge spike in insulin. Why? Because carbohydrates is sugar. You want to lower the insulin level, the, the blood sugar levels in the bloodstream. Now, when you eat protein, protein by itself doesn't really release a lot of insulin unless you have an overabundance. However, if you're having like a hamburger where you're, having a, where you're having a protein and a carbohydrate, yes, you're going to release insulin. So there it's going to elevate the insulin levels. However, if you notice here, when you have sugar products, you release insulin. Key thing is when you have fats, there is no insulin release. So that is my goal to control insulin levels, whether if you're type 1, type 2 diabetic, or if you're insulin resistant. The main goal is, is to eliminate the carbohydrates, have a good substantial amount of quality protein, but also too, in replacement of the carbohydrates that you're going to not have, you want to increase your fats. Remember, the body is made of two things, proteins and fats. So when you have proteins and fats, especially fats, you're not elevating your insulin levels. Okay, so the problem is with the standard American diet, you hear a lot of things saying, no, it's low fat, low fat, low fat. But again, they have to make up the flavor, so they beef up the sugar. And then this is how you get fat on a low fat diet. Now, if you want to lose weight, do the opposite. Have protein and have fat. Because remember, the fat that you're taking in is not elevating the, the insulin levels. Remember, the function of insulin is to lower blood sugar and also store fat. Okay, so the problem is, is that 50% 50, 50 of our population are insulin resistant without even knowing. Okay, now sugar releases insulin will actually increase hunger. Okay, so this is what, this is what makes me laugh. The American Diabetes Association, okay, the guidelines, requirement, 40 to 60 grams of carbohydrates a day. Now, again, if you look at the food pyramid, you'll see that in the ADA that the grains are wheat, gluten, sugar, sugar, even fruit, which is fructose, which is 10 times sweeter than sugar, than glucose, okay? That's why, yes, you get fat on fruit. The problem is it's 40, 60 grams. Now, what happens is that you're on diabetes medication. You're a type one or type two diabetic. You take the medications, okay, so this is what happens your blood sugar drops. So then what happens? You increase your, you, you take in a carbohydrate. Problem is now you increase the, the, the blood sugar. Now you take a medication and it's a continuous cycle. So if you go to your primary doc and you say, hey, I'm a type two diabetic, is there a cure, is there a cure for this? What are they gonna say? Of course not. Just take the medications and you can eat what you want. Now type one diabetes, it's an autoimmune disease. So is there a cure? There's not a cure for an autoimmune disease. However, you can stabilize the insulin levels a lot better by cleaning up your diet. Also, 40% of heart disease is related to sugar. Sugar 
causes systemic inflammation to the arterial walls. It damages the endothelial lining that aligns the arteries. Okay, so again, what do you got to do about all this? Okay, so now what are you going to do about it? The main goal I stress to everyone is you want to do everything possible that you're not going to have that insulin release. Remember that insulin release lowers the blood sugar, also too increases fat storage. So the goal is to not release the insulin. So first and foremost, get rid of refined sugars. Refined sugars, especially in the form of sodas, fruit juices, Gatorade, anything that's sweet is going to elevate the glucose levels again, and that's going to contribute to diabetes. Grains, gluten and wheat. Gluten and wheat is the biggest buzzwords now, very, very harmful to your body. Gluten, what also it does, it creates intestinal inflammation, which will elevate the cortisol and leptin levels. So you want to get rid of gluten and wheat. <clears throat> Next, dairy. Get rid of all dairy. Dairy is a lot of sugar, creates a lot of systemic inflammation. It's going to increase your blood sugar, and because it creates systemic inflammation, now you're going to have an immune response. So get rid of dairy. Alcohol. Alcohol is a tough one. Yes, I know. Okay. However, alcohol increases blood sugar, but also too, alcohol leads to liver disease. Alcohol zaps glutathione production in the liver. Alcohol tears up your intestinal mucosa lining. So get rid of alcohol. Next, GMO foods. GMO foods off the bat are horrible for you anyways. Yes, I know they're inexpensive, but they cause a lot of damage, especially the GMO corn, soy, and canola. And they're all linked to liver disease. So get rid of GMO. You want to spend a little bit more extra money on the organic foods. Hydrogenated oils. This is the oils. I stress highly. Olive oil, coconut oil are the two oils to cook with vegetable oil, soybean oil, canola oil, it's all crap, okay? It's going to cause inflammation and also too, it's going to elevate blood sugar levels. So again, get rid of these foods. Now supplementation, I'm big on supplementation. I always stress first, let's clean up the diet. Now let's add supplements. Supplements, very popular sub supplement, chromium picolinate, 2,000 microgram. I'm sorry, 200 micrograms, three times daily with food. The main function of uh, chromium picolinate is that it's going to increase insulin, insulin sensitivity. Also, too, cinnamon. One teaspoon of cinnamon on your foods will help control blood sugar levels. And also, too, believe it or not, because it's going to control blood sugar levels, it's going to help you lose weight. Fish oil. Fish oil. I can't say enough of fish oil. At least at least a thousand milligrams daily okay fish oil is not only phenomenal for brain health for stomach health but also too it's going to lower the trig your, your triglyceride levels which is your blood fat and it's going to help elevated the good the good cholesterol the high density lipoprotein levels okay it's also too going to make you more insulin sensitive alpha lipoic acid i did a video on this before phenomenal antioxidant one two because you are lowering the release of insulin. Alpha lipoic acid also helps pull those fatty acids that stored fat for energy. So alpha lipoic acid, phenomenal. Also too, can't stress it enough, exercise. Now when we take in food, sugar is stored. 75% of the sugar is stored in the muscles, 25% of it's stored in the liver. Exercise will help your body utilize that stored glucose, that stored, the stored glucose, that stored energy for energy production. It helps lower the blood sugar. It helps increase insulin sensitivity. It helps lower your chance of being insulin resistant just by exercising. Exercise, I can't stress enough, will help your blood sugar levels, will help type 1 diabetes, help type 2 diabetes. If you're insulin resistant, exercise will help that. And heck, it will even make you lose weight, improve confidence, and everything else that goes with it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button down below. Please share with a friend. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Be good. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwad. Hey, it's, over the last couple years, my YouTube channel has grown tremendously, and I can only appreciate it, the viewers who subscribe. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, 
please hit the subscribe button to get the first up-to-date videos, or you could always Google my name, Dr. Janan Jawad, and you could go to my JDoc Real Minute page. Again, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get the most up-to-date videos, and thanks everybody who's watching. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you.